Today I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to get references into your EndNote online account. So here I am in my EndNote online account and I already have some references in my account. They are all showing up right here. But what we'd like to do is add more. So to do that we go to collect in the taskbar at the top. So under Collect, there's a couple of different options. We can perform an online search. We can add a new reference that's a manual entry, and we can import references. So let's go to online search. Now I've said it before, and I'll say it again. This is not my choice for getting references into my EndNote account. But I, I do want to show it to you because it does exist there. The reason I don't like it is because you can do a much better search through the platform itself. So if you wanted to search PubMed or uh, a database that you have access to through your institution, just do it through your institution. You don't need to do it through EndNote. It's hard to see what you're doing. You can't do any complicated or complex searching, and you won't really be able to use the full functionality. But we will just um, demo it today so you can see what it looks like. So in step one, you get to choose what it is that you want to search, PubMed being my go-to database. I'll choose that one, and we'll connect to PubMed. And here's what it looks like. We have four boxes to fill in. We can fill in all of them or, or one of them. And I'm just going to fill in cystic fibrosis in the first box and then exercise. So we're looking for articles about cystic fibrosis and exercise, and we'll click search. So it's connecting me with PubMed. It's going to show me the results. There are going to be a lot of results. You'll see this number continue to grow. So here we see our number of results. So here are our initial results, and we can select them. I'll select a couple. And what we can do is add to group. We can add to a group that we've already created. We can leave them unfiled in my EndNote account, or we can put them in a new group. Because they're about cystic fibrosis, I'll put them in the cystic fibrosis group. And then here they will show up over here on the left in my cystic fibrosis group. That is where they'll be. So let's collect online search. Not my favorite option, but it is there just in case. It might work better if you had a known item, say a title of an article that you already knew what you were looking for. The second option is new reference. So we'll click on that, and that, like I said, is manual entry. So if you have a patent, a podcast, a blog post, a web page, you might add it this way if it's something a little bit more unusual. So depending on what you select here, will determine which fields show up and what you need to enter. So I'll select web page, and here we have author, title, year, uh, different options. Here's the URL, which is where you'll enter the web page. And then that will be added to your account. So you can play around with that a little bit. And again, once it's in your account, you'll be able to organize it by adding it to a group or leaving it unfiled, depending on what it is that you'd like to do with it. And then the third option is import references. And import references, you'll need to go outside of EndNote to collect those references from a database like PubMed, like Scopus or Embase, Im export them to a file, and then import them into EndNote. So let me show you what that looks like. And I'm going to do that through the Cook Library homepage. So on the Cook Library homepage, we'll start under databases. And we are going to look for PubMed initially. So let's look for PubMed. We're going to do a little bit of searching in PubMed. And if you'd like to learn to be an expert searcher, there are lots of videos out there to teach you how to do that. So under in PubMed in the search box, I'm going to do the same search, cystic fibrosis and exercise. So again, we'll click search. We'll get our results, and you can always use some of these filters over here on the left to limit by date range, to limit by article type. I'm not going to do that right now, but they are there. So we'll click a couple of them, and we want to get them into EndNote. I've selected the first five. Of course, you could browse, you could select, you can take what you'd like. 
And up at the top, we have the options to save, email, or send to. What we're going to do is save the selection. So we don't want all results on this page. We don't want all results. We want the selection. And what we want to do is put it in a format that EndNote can read and understand. And that format is PubMed. So we're giving ourselves a file in a specific format that we're then going to import into EndNote. So it's going to give me the file. I'm going to save it in my downloads. And we'll go back to EndNote, which I have open here. And we're going to browse to that file. It's in my downloads folder. It's the last one I imported. Should I say the last one I exported? And we're going to select that file. Now we need to tell EndNote where it's from. The default for a lot of databases is Refman RIS. So if you're using something like Scopus or Embase, that's what you'll select. But we used PubMed, so let's select PubMed. That tells EndNote how to read this file. And again, we get to choose whether to import it into a group, put it unfiled, or put it into a new group. And again, I'm going to put it into cystic fibrosis because that's the topic. I like to stay organized by projects. So here we go. It's going to tell me five references were imported into your cystic fibrosis group. To get to those, I go to my references. And again, I can just click on cystic fibrosis. Now there's another way to get references into EndNote Web. And it can be a little complicated, so let me go back to the Cook Library's home page, and I'll show you how to do that. So we're in Cook OneSearch, which is a federated search of EBSCO-hosted databases like ERIC, like PsycInfo, CINAHL, and a lot more. What we're going to do is perform our search again. Same search. Of course, depending on your topic, you get to decide how you search. And we'll click search. And here we have a lot of results. And I might need to sign in to my, yeah, I need to sign in with my university credentials in order to be able to select these. So it signed me in. And now it wasn't showing up before, but it is now a blue folder with a plus sign on it. That's going to let me select these references. So of course, again, you can apply filters over here on the left. You can select what you like. So I'll just select the first five. The folder turns yellow and they show up over here on the right hand side. So I'll go to folder view. And here they are, it says five items. And what we're going to do is select export. So that's what we need to do from this page, export. Now it's a little confusing because there's a paid version of EndNote and there's a free version of EndNote. So here's EndNote, that's the paid version. We're using EndNote Web, so we actually want the second op option, direct export to EndNote Web. So once we've selected that, we're going to save. And what we'll need to do is sign in again, I think. No? Sometimes you might need to sign in again. In this case, I was already signed in, so it gave me those records. EBSCO host import results, five. Now, I don't think I had a chance to file them, so let's go back to my references. Let's look at unfiled. I think I have a couple in there. Um, it would probably be the last five. Let's see, sort by, added to library, newest to oldest. Looks like they're in alphabetical order anyway. Aha. So I could then select these references and I see that I have some duplicates here, and that's a topic for another video, how to get rid of these duplicates. But anyway, I would select them and again, just organize them into my group. So that, uh, those are a couple of different ways to get references into your EndNote account.
to perform an online search, which, meh, not my favorite idea. New reference, add manually, and then import references from a database like PubMed or one of your university or institution or organization subscriptions. So those are your options. I hope this was helpful to you. Feel free to reach out to your librarian or me for help or assistance. And thanks for watching. Thank you.